one. All right, guys, Dave Chang here. Uh, I'm doing my recipe club take, and I was tasked with doing a fusion. What is a prize again? And what is a prize? Also Korean. And this is from page 75 or 68 from Bricia's Asada cookbook. Oh, look at him doing the plug. Aww. This is very sweet. This is a great cookbook, it's a lifestyle. And we're also gonna be cooking page 195, I think, 196 for the salsa. Uh, forgive me, I could be wrong, but uh, we're making my version, not my version, some interpretation of carne asada classico. There are a lot of similarities in my opinion, whether uh, I'm sure people have figured them all out between Korean food and Mexican food, even though they're extremely different. Um, Roy Choi really figured out many, many of those flavors with this Kogi truck. And I'm gonna be doing things that I've never made before, but also trying to make a recipe that's really not anything, really just trying to pay respect to the recipe in Bricio's book, but also make something different and fun. And also try to make food that probably might actually exist, right? There's a huge Korean population in Mexico City. I actually haven't tasted any of that food, but I would imagine things evolve and things change. And let's just say they're using cilantro, they're using tomatillo in their, in their dishes and they may never have before. You know, tomato is in a lot of modern Korean dishes and a lot of cold noodle soups. So um, don't wanna bore you with a armchair history lesson, but I, I will just get to you with what I'm thinking about doing and it's a lot. Yesterday, I made a marinade of, this is shaved ribeye. And I chose shaved ribeye because, again, Chris and I were talking about how I love going to a Mexican supermarket and their butcher area and all the meats are cut very differently than what you might get in a traditional American butcher shop. And it's very familiar to me because a lot of the cuts are very different, but similar to how Koreans and Japanese and a lot of Chinese uh, meat cuts are. Very thin cuts of what is normally a chewy uh, piece of beef. This isn't chewy, this is ribeye, it's always delicious. and. I, I was screwing around yesterday because I wanted to get ahead for today because I didn't know what the hell I was gonna cook. So in here I did a, a Calbee marinade, but I added serrano ham, not serrano ham, serrano pepper, uh, Coca-Cola. I really wanted to use uh, the, the Mexican Spanish cider, the manzanilla cider, Cidre type of thing. It's delicious, it's sweet, it's one of my favorite sodas, uh, mainly because in uh, my mom's Korean marinade and a lot of marinades for uh, kalbi, uh, the beef short rib, there's Korean pears and fruit juice or kiwi. So I want to do something that was a little bit different than um, normal. So listen, I didn't have that. If I did have the apple cider soda, I would have put that in. But I put in cherry Coke because we had it from Recipe Club. Um, uh, there's sesame seed, garlic, onion, uh, black pepper, um, and soy sauce and a little fish sauce and Worcestershire sauce because that's also in the marinade for uh, this carne asada recipe. So again, not exactly the same, but the one thing I'm gonna add that I didn't add yesterday is some oregano. And I heard uh, earlier that clove is a huge part of this recipe. So we're gonna, we're gonna sprinkle a little bit in here. It's sweet, it's spicy. Um, this may seem left to center, but these marinades, they're, they're salty, they're sweet, they're umami. Um, they're just tasty. You know, I, I, that's why I wanted to taste uh, Bricia's uh, carne uh, asada marinade, just to get a sense of how different it might be. Um, and honestly, very different, but also very similar. I'm gonna break it down by the cuts I have, right? So I have ribeye, and that's marinated. From Vaya to supermarkets, great supermarket, I bought chuck steak. So uh, I'll show you that in a second. It's really similar to a seven bone steak, which is a classic, classic American cut that you don't see that often anymore. Um, and I'm gonna do another marinade just so I can make one and you guys can see new marinade. What that is, I have no f***ing idea. So <laughs> it's writing new marinade. Pork belly, we're gonna do 
uh, spicy. Um, and we're going to make a mother sauce. Because I'm going to take this sauce, the marinade that I'm going to make for the pork belly, and I'm going to make that into some kind of dressing for uh, cabbage, almost like a gochori, a fresh kimchi. That might be good with uh, the tacos that we're going to make. And so I'll turn that into that. And I'll make it a marinade. And I'll turn that into sort of like a salsa as well. All right, that's pork belly. Uh, and I just have some stuff that I had frozen. Uh, I, I cooked a dinner here for a couple friends a couple months ago. And these were in the freezer, so might as well. And this is something I cook a lot at home. Uh, this is just short rib. And I'm just going to season that with some momofuku savory salt and keep keep the options like if you don't want to marinate or maybe you're on a specific diet you can have something that's plain and it's going to be equally as delicious so that's just going to be short rib so cabbage i have to make a sam plate these are going to be my wrapping vehicles i got to do flour tortilla they're not really tortillas um i think they're more of like I'll explain why I did it the way I did. And one that is actually, I just screwed around today when Bruccio was making, finishing up, I, I did like a, maybe more of a proper one. Cabbage. I have to make my Dongchimi drink. I was gonna cook rice. I got a little over, uh, I got a little uh, over my skis. So not a surprise. Also, I made this salsa. I already made a salsa, I forgot about it. Why don't you get fancier like grapeseed oil than me? Just None of this is fair. He brought, thank you. None Welcome is, to Recipe Club. None Nothing is, is fair. fair. Taking the seeds out. These are guajillo chilies. Uh, not really spicy. Uh, it's amazing to me that the chili pepper was only introduced to Korea in like the 18th century, 17th century, um, through the Portuguese. And Korean food used to be a lot like this dongjimi dish that I'm going to share with you in a second. Oh, perfect. And I got some arbol. These, these are spicy. And I'm going to do something sacrilegious. I am going to toast it in the microwave. What else do I want to put in here? I got garlic. I got the guajillo. I got the arbol. I'm going to add some kochukaru, so that's like a, just a Korean dried chili. But I'm not going to toast that. I'm just going to also, he's using like pre-made stuff. Like, yo. Wait, what is he using? Oh yeah, he did a bunch of stuff yesterday. Yeah, I'm like, yo. He's a real cheater. My marinade for the chuck flap. Apple juice. This is my friend's apple juice he sent me. I would normally add a Korean pear, um, but I've been known to put fresh apples in as well. I'm gonna add some sesame oil, some tamari or soy sauce, some Worcestershire, onion, black pepper. I would never use this in a professional kitchen, the Nutribullet, but for again, domestic cooking or cooking where you're not really serving and not using it all the time, I find this to be extremely effective and easy because I can use it multiple times. It's easy to clean. Uh, the only thing that sucks is you can't really put hot things in it, but um, it's way easier than using a blender, in my opinion. That's delicious. I'm gonna add some savory salt to it too. I've now toasted the chilies. I'm gonna let that sit for a second. I'm going to add a little agave to this as well. Look, I'm and he's just it. adding more sugar. I Do you know, see how he I just know. like, I he's like. I told you the difference is all always sugar. And this is a wonderful cut. It's called seven bone because there are like seven different bones in it or seven different cuts of meat. Uh, I discovered this through Sean Gray because um, he, went to some old school supermarket and they were selling this and this is thin. I've never cooked this before in this thinness. Um, so we'll see. And when we did cook it at the restaurant, we would uh, cook it in vacuum for like 48 hours um, and then grill it off and it was delicious. So we'll see what happens. But I have no doubt that if I had marinated it long enough, uh, again, this is one of the reasons why Marinating meats isn't just to impart flavor. It does, depending on your ingredients, help make it more tender and more flavorful. So I don't always like to marinate meats, but again, in, in Korean food, you marinate a lot of, uh, not everything.
probably like half an app or a third. Third is marinated in something that's soy based. Third is another third is in like something spicy with gochujang cream fermented chili. And the other third is with just salt and pepper and sesame oil. So again, if I did this proper, like I did yesterday, I would have done this 24 hours in advance. All right. Wait, tell me what's happening now. So he marinated his his chuck steak yeah. in the in the microwave in the any day bowl. I think he microwaved the chilies and oil in place of toasting oh, them. I, wrote... I think that's what he did there. Interesting. A mother sauce. If you can read my handwriting, and I want to use this into three different things. One, a quick marinade for the pork belly. Two, a dressing for this cabbage that I'm going to chiffonade. Uh, so almost make it like a fresh kimchi. It's like a Kochori, uh, really, it's like my favorite kind of kimchi. Fresh, vibrant, and uh, just enough of that kimchi flavor without it being overly fermented because it's not fermented at all. So that'll be a dressing and maybe turn it into some kind of salsa as well, but that might be a stretch. In, in, in theory, this is almost gonna be like the Momofuku chili crunch, which I have here and I might add some. And one of the reasons we made that is there is this correlation between salsa matcha and a lot of the chili oil that you might find in a Chinese restaurant. And when I first saw salsa matcha, I, I couldn't believe how similar it was to the stuff that I grew up eating. He does use a lot of chiles de árbol and I've seen it on his recipe, right? Mm -hmm. So like, and there's the sweetness and the sesame seeds. So it is bringing that Asian Mexican fusion. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add some tamari, sesame seeds. Oh, I, there's, just, there's the word. I don't know what the Worcestershire sauce ended up here. Sauce. Sure. He's going to do momofuku oil. Oh, oh agave syrup. That's a secret ingredient, I, I realize. Oh. He does like the sugar. I do too. And we'll give this a blend. I'm still going to start adding things to this. And I'm making this off the cuff. So if it looks like I'm thinking about something, it's because I am thinking about something. I have no idea what the hell this is. Look at him, look at him. He's like, yeah, I'm, much I'm better. Really yeah, right? Watch his eyes will get big. Really, really, really big. Ah! <laughs> you see that sh You see ah! that? <laughs> Do I know this guy or what? One is for the stressing. I might add a little cumin to that. Another is for salad dressing. Yeah, so I'm going to reserve that. And for the marinade, I'm now going to add Mexican oregano some clove, some cumin seed that I'm not gonna toast, just a little bit, and some spicy. This is pork belly that is actually harder to find in stores. It's with the skin on, and uh, usually I would probably buy something skin off. This is delicious, but I don't have the time to prepare the skin properly, so that makes me sad. So I'm just gonna take the skin off and then um, figure it out from there. What's he gonna do though? Is he gonna do it? He's I not don't gonna know. raise it though. He's gonna take this, taking the skin off because he's gonna try to do it quicker. So no skin. Is he? Although he's chuck, cutting big old chunks. Oh! Oh, oh okay. <laughs> you thought that was one of the garbage. I too. was like, wow. <laughs> hey. All right, he's gonna do little like this is the this is sort of what we're talking about. I think he's gonna. It's not gonna be like uh, braised melt in your mouth pork belly. I think it's gonna be something else here. Certified math scientist. I know where's he going. With He's this? gonna put the marinade on it. Yeah, of course. For, for out of the, there you go. There it is. Okay. Salt. Honestly, Look at him. as I'm watching this, he's showing off for you. That's what he's Good. doing. He's showing I'm off. I'm glad for I'm you. bringing. I'm I'm glad I'm bringing the best. <laughs> this is classic, David. You have raw meat in your hand, and you just put this. Oh my god. <laughs> I love how he was like keeping the you one hand. Wait, 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 he was keeping the one hand apart and then he was like, uh, okay. And then he's like, well, now that I've tasted it, now I should just put it in this tub. Then he just like Winnie the Pooh it into the honey jar. So this I want to be like a salsa almost. So I'm not sure exactly what, but we had some fried shallots in house. So I'm gonna add some of that. And we have some peanuts. <laughs> this guy is just bringing it. Peanuts. Oh, he is going to make basically a salsa matcha. And you know what? I'm going to hold off and do this because, you know, I should, since it was a recipe that the salsa recipe is a tomatillo recipe, I'm going to put 
some tomatillos and see if this works. I'm gonna broil this. Um, and I set the broiler, I think the broiler is not used enough in home kitchens. It's clearly not as strong as a professional broiler, which is like an inferno, but it's a great tool that a lot of, that gets underutilized. This LG oven has a two broiler setting. I have it on high. Um, and I put one of the, the sheet rack trays at the highest level. So uh, we'll see if this works and I want it closer to the flame as possible. This is also, I think I'm gonna cook some of the meat as well. So um, that won't take as long. So here we go. So I like to have two dry towels. Um, if I was working the line, I would have this double stacked into one, right like this. And that's my oven mitt. This is why I hate oven mitts because you could just use this as an oven mitt. Um, and you want a double stack because if you're going in and out of hot ovens, it will protect your hands and you always have a wet and another dry, uh, depending on the kind of kit you're in. So um, I have all my meat ready. We'll get this, do this here. Okay. Oh, there's the big eye. There's the big eye. <laughs> I told you. Yeah. It's almost like a non prick, almost. Um, it tastes like that. I think that's really nice. I'm going to add some shiso to this. I'm not even sure what the hell it is, but we're going to call it a salsa for right now. And I'm only putting shiso in because I didn't have cilantro in hand. And this is how, you know, the big joke that it's arms reach cooking. Like, I just, I know it's going to be delicious. I'm gonna garnish with some sesame oil on top. And I'm gonna look back at this video because I don't know what the fuck I just put into this, but it's really, it's really goddamn good. When I taste this, it's a lot. Some might, some people might hate it because it's a, it's a shit ton of different things going on, but it's almost like an everlasting gobstopper. I'm tasting oregano, I'm tasting cumin, but it's balanced out in like a, like a spice blend, like a Vaduvan or Raza El Halanut blend. And I get the texture from the nuts, the shallots, uh, I get sesame, I get everything. Um, and it reminds me of Nam Prik, it reminds me of some kind of salsa matcha, and it reminds me also of Samja. So that's what I wanted this to be, something that overlapped all three of those Venn diagrams. That is ready to go. And right now I'm really mad at myself. I just wiped down with my dry towel. That's a big no-no. So I was actually, I'm, I'm charring the tomatillos because I was gonna put it to this and add it, but I'm not. I'm sure it will be delicious, but this tastes so good, I'm gonna maybe do something else with the tomatillos now. Uh, get this chopped up, ready to go. The only reason I'm cooking rice is I'm looking at a lot of this uh, meat and uh, it, you have to eat it with <laughs> rice too, right? So this is fusion. I'm also gonna add a couple scallions to, I bought these at the farmer's market yesterday. I think these, I didn't even need scallions, but they were the nicest scallions I think I've ever seen in my life. Uh, no hyperbole. So I'm just gonna pop these in the salamander. I'm gonna put in a little onion in this. Oh, look at that. Yes, chef, oh. keep chopping. <laughs> and some scallion. Because this is uh, like a quick kimchi, there's no time for acidity to build up, lack of acidic fermentation. So I'm gonna just mirror it with some lemon juice, a little bit of salt. And the reason I'm doing this with the salt, I know that this is salty, but I wanna add a little bit of salt because I wanna help accelerate making it broken down a little bit. So I'm crunching it up as I go. So it still has crunch and has texture, but I'm trying to extract some of that moisture out to break it down so it's a little bit more of a slaw and mimic like it's been sitting around fermenting for a bit, even though I'm just doing it right now. That's what I mean by the mother sauce. Now it's been three completely different flavors, very similar. And I wanted to make this more as like a quick kimchi, but 
clearly it's not. I think it needs to be spicier. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna add some Momo Chili Crunch. Oh my God! That's a Chili Crunch coming out. You look at that. I'm dead, I can't. That's legit delicious. I know I sound asinine because I'm saying that, but it's, it's really good. Now all I have to do is cook off the meat and try, try my hand at making tortillas. Look at this though, what do you think about this move? I think that's gonna go straight back under the broiler on top of the semolitas. He's like out chefing me so hard right now. I did not, again, plan on <laughs> doing either of these things the way it is, but it seems like a good idea. Pop this in at a high broiler, broiler again. What I'm hoping is the apple juice um, will help accelerate the caramelization. What I'm trying to do is, even though it's not grilled, it's cooked over an open flame, because that's what the broiler setting is. <clears throat> and I'm hoping to get that, accelerate that Maillard reaction, get that sugar nice and charred to again, mimic some of that flavor you get from a grill. No. But that's, oh, the, that's the idea. Winner, winner, see? ding, look ding, at, ding. See, look at this. I just added the Michelada mix and it has everything that I, I was looking for, so. Why not? Acidic, spicy, sweet. Give us a, give, people <laughs> at home need to know what it tastes like. So, okay, chamoy, um, just dried fruits, citrus is like mostly like stone fruits. But the thing is like most of the chamoys are very sweet. But like for me, because I'm from the south of Mexico, it's like so everything we do is so different. Our chamoy is high citrus, high salt. So for me, it's about okay. like kind of getting those like. The sal saliva the, going. Yeah, the saliva going. That's really extremely good. I've broken him. Where am I? <laughs> He's like, I'm sorry, what are we doing now? <laughs> oh, the pan? All the cooking's oh. coming now. Now it's all happening. Now it's I was like self-conscious of having two pans on the stove. Yeah, okay, this is the pork belly. This is just all-purpose flour, hot water. I'd give you measurements, but I just eyed it. There are a couple dishes, they're more like royal court dishes in Korean cuisine, where color is a big part of it. And one of the things you do is you wrap it in like a flour pancake. There is there is bread in Korean culture. So there's a lot of things that are flat and bread-like, flat bread. So that's what I thought I'd wrap it in. I didn't want to do a yeasted one, similar to what we do at our restaurants with Bing. So more of a mandarin pancake, something you might get at a uh, a Peking duck restaurant. Honestly, it, it, it's a little bit more like uh, chapati. All right, I got a lot going on. <laughs> Maybe too much. All right, so he said to me earlier that he was going to roll out these Because he didn't tortillas. want to deal with it, with the plastic, because he's equal. Well, you can't really press. Can you really press flour no, tortillas? No, 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 because no, no. they just, they don't. Oh, this guy's probably gonna make the best flour tortilla and I'm gonna hate him for it. Well, I'm glad gonna, I didn't I think he's try. gonna press a shiso leaf in the middle of it just to make it really annoying. I, I, I did this overnight. The reason I did is I want it to rest, right? I want the, the structure of the dough to just chill out. Um, otherwise it's gonna be too tight. And if I wasn't in a hurry, I'd shape them a lot nicer. It's not like I do this every day. It's going to be good. All right, so this one, when Brigio was finishing up, I made one with pork fat, um, and I threw in a little baking powder. And if you're gonna stack these up and it's not humid, if it is humid, you shouldn't stack it up. It's pretty dry right now. Um, and the reason I'm flouring it is I do not want them to stick together. I need some savory salt, and on like a medium high heat, the pork is pretty much done. Uh oh. Please, uh -oh. Please. Uh oh. Oh, did it rip? <laughs> it ripped. I saw it. I keep on telling her that it's not a competition between her and David. These two. Who's competitive? Who's no, competitive? No, I know I'm going to win. Oh. 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 Oh, it worked. He we we he showed us. He showed us. He showed us. Oh, he showed us. Where does he, he does keep disappearing? 
and then you can see a little flicker there. The tape is stopped. This is a <laughs> recording. I know. We're watching a recording. Saying. No, he puts something in. Well, he oh, he puts it in. It is neat. Oh, good job, buddy. So this is not going to get charred. Um, this is going to be a lot more like Korean pulgogi, which is shaved and it's simmered and it, it's just really tender. Um, this would be not something. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a, I'm sure it exists because I'm hardly a taco expert, but I've never seen that kind of texture in a taco before. All right, so that's the, that's the broiled asada. Look at him. <laughs> he is a fucking magician, this man. He's a wizard. Chefs, like this is, this is like wizarding in front of you. Cause there's a, yeah, he's just going and doing it. Oh my God, is he gonna chop all this up? Of course. Mm. Oh, I hate you so much right now. That's the move. That I was you. it. I hate him. That's the win. I officially hate him. That's the whole win right there. Oh, yeah. So yesterday I made uh, that salsa on page 194, 195. I can't remember. But I added a, I basically made a kimchi uh, with fish sauce, ginger, garlic. I added... Um, Korean red peppers, gochugaru, serrano pepper. What else? Shit, I don't remember. But and I blistered some tomatoes and I pureed that. Ruth. What? She's pissed at you. Why? I'm not. What? <laughs> what? 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 Are you, what? This whole thing? I just threw something off. <laughs> this whole thing together. Just, you are wearing Birkenstocks yeah, the entire time? I'm inspired by her book. I wanted Dude. to do a sauna style because Dude. I love your book so much. She, Seriously, okay? You're like a real <laughs> life wizard magician. I don't even but know I what mean, to yeah, say. But I was like, Shit, we have a guest. She's doing her thing. Right. And I was like, I want to show you that your book was really influential. And it An really mirrored a lot of things that I care about in Korean food, and I was like, let's do a real try, like a real blend. Wait, and I was gonna make a habanero sauce, but I didn't. Because, um, because I didn't have enough to work with here. So this this chuck steak came out great. It's the seven bone. This tastes like Indian, almost. <laughs> this, this is like fugu yeast, but none of this was like, everything was a real mixture of all the ingredients. Cause like salsa matcha to me is like very like Asian too, right? So. Well, as I was saying that like, when I tasted your chili crisp, I was like, this is giving me like Mexican vibes. And I looked at the ingredient list and I was like, oh yeah, like you're using a lot of Mexican chiles. And I feel like that really was, like you've been at this salsa matcha game for a very long yeah. time and chiles for a long time. Um, Seven bone was under the broiler. This was the pork belly, right? Yeah. This was just in the, the mega wok. These are adorable, unbelievable. She thought she, she, we thought we had you when one seemed to be sticking to the board. And then you just walked away from it for a second and then came back and was like, floop, floop. <laughs> it's like, how did that thing unstick? Well, listen, itself? like, if I wasn't under a time crunch, I could have made it way nicer, right? But it is what it is. So, so plate. what I'm most proud of is this fucking thing. I don't know what this is, but it's delicious. So, this is like a sada style, right? Just like your book. You know, eat as you please and however you want. And so, I took some don't you me, right? So, this is the. This is the like my dad's lifeblood growing up, all right? This is watery kimchi, and it's really you're doing it with moo radish, which is the Korean radish, but I didn't have any of that stuff. And I put a bunch of citrus in there and salt. I'll make another video showing you how the fuck I did it. Um, and I just, you make naengmyeon by adding beef broth to the dongjime liquid. So mm. I wanted to make a michelada. Oh my God, I think this is this. The kimchi one? Mm. Mm. Wait, well also, what did you put, what did you do in these tortillas, Dave? You didn't say. I don't know. Don't you mean Lara? Here you go, Chris. Oh my goodness. This is the thing. Non-alcoholic, made it with athletic. Cheers. Oh, oh. Mm. That's pretty good. It's a little legit, pretty good. That's ridiculous. And honestly, like going to Mexico City was a uh, eye-opening experience for me. Really opened my wait till you come to Oaxaca. You and, have to. But for me, what was important was seeing the Korean people. There's so mm -hmm. many Korean people in Mexico mm -hmm. City, and I didn't get a chance to eat their food because I had to get that goddamn colonoscopy. <laughs> but <laughs> that being said, well, good timing. <laughs> 
I was planning, I was waiting for that entire time. Um, was like, I, I, what I wanted to do, so what I was thinking about the fusion was thinking about like, okay, if my, my, grand, my great-grandfather came to Mexico City in 1924 instead of San Francisco, yeah. of course, like what would it look like? They're not going to get the same ingredients. So that's why I feel like you can really conjure up flavors that might actually exist. I thought when, it, when I would come out to taste this, I actually thought it would just all taste Korean. I think you legitimately towed the Mexican Korean line really interestingly. Oh, so this is just water and flour, this this guy. You know? No fat. No fat. The the bigger one without the shiso is uh with fat. The chuck stick came out great. I've never made any of this before. This is the tomatillo salsa. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, like I want to be respectful to Koki territory, like I wanted, you know, I think that I'm sure there's overlap with other things, but I was just trying to be like, what would my flavors be if my great grandfather was making Korean barbecue as Korean asada, as bar, you know, Mexican asada? Yeah. yeah. And I think if you think that way, your flavors will be distinctly different than anyone else's, even if you cook the same thing. This this is like legit good. Yeah. This is <laughs> yes. This is so different too. It's just like not. Anything like this is like nothing. But it tastes Mexican. There's, you taste the oregano, you taste the cumin, you taste the clove. At least I do. This is uh, Bricia's recipes as reimagined by an alternate universe in which the Chang family <laughs> arrived in Mexico City. And, and honestly, I would not have thought about this if I didn't have your book. Aww, and I was thank like, you. how do I make it asada style? So here we go. I love this. 